Right, we expect a few more incomings and outgoings, especially at Chelsea over the next few days. Let's get to Arsenal though. They won over £30 million for Eddie Nketiah as talks continue with Nottingham Forest for the striker. First of all, from the player's point of view, do you think this is a good move for him? Is it the right time for him now to go somewhere else, seek past his new, get some more minutes under his belt? Yeah, it feels like that, doesn't it? I think, you know, for Arsenal, for the player as well, you know, he's not really been able to get game time fairly in Kitia. And as you mentioned, you know, I think at this point in his career, he needs to be really starting every week. I think the question is, is that Nottingham Forest when they have two strikers already in Chris Wood in tow, wouldn't you? I mean, he's obviously they've had injury problems, those two players. I think Nikisia will probably back himself to get in the team above those players. He'll have a big belief in what he can do. And I think Nikitia, what's been missing from his career so far is that consistent game time. You can't be consistent when you're playing 20 minutes here, 60 minutes there, not coming off the bench for a few games. He isn't going to get the minutes that he needs at Arsenal, so he needs to go somewhere. Forest is a good environment. You've been there plenty of times. I've been there a few times as well. Forest is a good club. I think he can go there and kind of kickstart his career a little bit. I think that's what he needs. He's almost got lost in Aston Arsenal. I think when he signed his contract, Arsenal weren't the beast that they are now. And over the years, they've almost kind of gone beyond Nketiah's current level. I'm not saying he could never get to that level, but at the moment, I don't think he's quite there to be a striker for a team that's challenging for the title. And I think in some ways, if Nketiah can take a backward step at Forest, it might enable him to go forwards later on in his career. But if he comes into Forest with Wood and are we there, if they both stay, is he number one? Does he go in as number one? I think it's a different option for Nuno Espirito Santo and probably just allows him to be a bit more flexible week to week. I think you look at Chris Wood, you know, he was very underrated, I think, last season. 14 goals in the Premier League, another double-digit season for him. You mentioned Ty Winnie, he struggled with a groin injury last season. So I think letting him work back into the season on his fitness, I don't think is a bad thing. I think with Eddie Nikitia, you have a different profile of a striker, you know, someone who can run in behind. Also, maybe link a bit differently with like some Morgan Gibbs-White, Callum hudson Odui, who he'll know very well from the England underage groups as well. Anthony Alanga as well off the other wing. So I think, you know, that actually is a front four. There's a lot of speed there. There's a lot of creativity. And also, it's just a bit of a different attack compared to if you would have had Taiwo or Mie and Chris Wood there. So I think that's something Nuno Espirito Santo has been looking for. I think Nottingham Forest are all substantially looking at the Feyenoord striker Santiago Jimenez as well, so it definitely looks like they're looking for that extra number 9. We'll just see in the last week of the window again, what are they going to do about it? OK, well that could be one out of Arsenal. One coming in could be Michael Marino, because Arsenal remain in talks with Real Sociedad over signing the midfielder. It's thought the clubs are finalising the payment structure and the makeup of the performance-related add-ons. Dan, you know, I keep hearing Arsenal have had a good window or good window in comparison to their two main competitors, Man City and Liverpool, who've been very dormant in this window. But they've only made one big signing, right? Ricardo Calafiori, defender in an area where they're very strong already. Do you think Arsenal need to make one more big or decent signing for it to really be considered a successful window? I think it's tough to know. We've just sat here and absolutely lambasted Chelsea. And then I think it's very difficult to then come and question what Arsenal are doing when we've seen how they've grown over the last two or three years, how they've improved upon year upon year. They've got better and better to become. I think they are, I know they've not won anything, but I think Arsenal are an elite team now. Calafiori obviously came off the back of a brilliant international tournament. He gives them the natural left-footed option at left back. So you could argue that yes, they were well started at full back, but he's something different, perhaps something that they needed. They want to build up as a back three that he can tuck in. He's a very versatile left back that can do different things. I think they still need that midfield player, and that's what Marino is. Someone who could come in, you know, party, might not be able to play every week. I think Arsenal were at their best last season when they had party, Rice and Odegaard. Obviously started the season very well. They've got Jorginho there as well, but I think they just need that other option so that they can be a bit more flexible game to game, have different teams for different competitions, like Champions League, Premier League. I think he'd make Arsenal stronger. I think he could play multiple roles in that midfield. If they get him in, I don't see that only signing two players has been a problem for Arsenal because I think they're building in the right way. I do think the proof's in the pudding. I think the club has now, over the last few years, earned enough trust for the fans to think, yes, these guys know what they're doing. 